tutorial starts with a song, but it's only a few seconds long. Computer animation. Computer Started with animation. Hello friends, we'll create simple particles being emitted from an object. This is usually done by going to FX and then end particles and here you can emit from objects or create an emitter which sits in the center of the scene and you can animate it and everything. Lots of uh, tutorials about end particles and I did some of them. Today we want to concentrate on emitting particles using the Bifrost Graph Editor, which is a node editing module in Maya, very powerful, because you can layer things, etc. I sometimes get comments, why do you always start from scratch rather than going into the depth of the matter? Well, just fast forward. I just want to start with a new scene. This is just the way I like it and I think it's quite useful for people who are um, not so familiar with these things here. I created uh, with the right mouse click a super ellipse here. It doesn't look like a super ellipse but when I press N uh, random here it does random again so it looks a little bit different. Now I want to animate this because this is going to be the emitter of our particles. And in order to animate it, we can animate it in the translate Y direction, that's up and down. And we just enter a function like equals. You always have to type in equal if you want to write an expression here rather than t uh, producing keyframes. And uh, I want it to move up and down by three units and in a pulsating way, sign of time in parentheses so it swings up and down this is a very simple function but highly effective and I can only recommend you if you need a basic uh, animation of uh, an object just to try out things just use expressions here I will use uh, another one here equals and now I type in 15 times frame. That means uh, I want it to rate, rotate in X 15 times the frame rate of this animation. That's because the degrees are from 0 to 360, so they uh, small values uh, progress <laughs> very slowly. So I type in times 50 and the frame rate so it makes a little bit more of an animation here. Okay, if you type in something with a times frame uh, function here in the Z axis, uh, please do it. It's, uh, it looks really nice. Now to the Windows Bifrost Graph Editor. It opens an empty space here but when you create you can create a new graph. It has an input and an output and uh, this is the logic behind it basically you put something in and you get something out mathematically boolean algebra what we want to do now is create particles and for that purpose you just press the tab key which gives us the choice of particles for example if you type in particles you see particle solvent settings, particles, basic particle graph, and that's what we're going to choose. This is uh, what it looks like, and we can right mouse click now and expand it, which is called explode, and then it explodes, here's the input, explodes into three units here, the source particles, the particle solver settings and the simulation of the particles. Now the this thing is in the scene but it doesn't do anything because it's not yet connected to our object. So let's connect it to our object now. Uh, the input is not abstract but it is our super shape. Middle mouse, drag it into this window. It's important, middle mouse. 
and uh, because the uh, middle mouse button is, um, is the connection button basically now output is the mesh it is our geometry it's the super shape it's that star like object uh, and here we can have the source particles and connect it with the mesh just hook it up here it accepts the geometry of our object now when we minimize this still no particles and the reason of course is because here is a connection missing and we can just easily do this particles come out of the simulation process and go into the output and now the output changes to output particles so we put out particles minimize this and now we see the particles lots of them before we continue right mouse click assign a new material and we assign an Arnold standard surface shader and use one of the presets and for example gold gold looks black here in the viewport because it's uh, very reflective and there's nothing to reflect from here but f uh, for rendering this is quite cozy so uh, we want to go back to this node editor and change a few things uh, just to show you that you can change these things you cannot do much about the super shape currently but uh, the source particles is quite good here here you have parameters and if you need information use this tab here this is the information about what this node is good for uh, it's not available for all kinds of nodes but for many so the simulation is enabled you can disable it here of course the start frame end frame etc you can emit from a surface which is good or from the volume whatever you like and uh, the volume has a detail property and uh, we have an emission rate of 100 let's reduce this to say 80 then we have a rate mode which is oops the construction site makes noise again using the density for example and here you have the emission speed let's uh, raise this from 2 to 5 Maya always takes a couple of seconds before it gets ready for the new uh, setting here the Bifrost graph editor at least in the current version which is version 1 is a little bit slow so these things can be done in the source of particles the particle machinery where it's being made here are the solver settings they have to do with gravity and the gravity is active and the gravity vector points down minus 9.8 on the moon it would be one sixth of that uh, but if we want the particles not to shoot down or fall down but rather be distributed in a random way we need a random node before we introduce this let's have a look here And now we introduce a random node tab the randomness can be found here wait a minute under core randomization you find the curl noise for example fracton noise etc I haven't tried out the curl noise yet let's uh, let's try it out um, the curl noise has <laughs> position time smoothness and seed uh, and it has a, ye a green output now we the best thing to do is to find a green input here and we actually find a green input here if you go select this you see three sections general particle solver globals and particle display and that's the same what you see here so uh, if we want to change the gravity vector so it uh, the particles spread in all kinds of directions uh, you open this section by pressing clicking on the plus and now you have a green and green <laughs> option basically feeding the gravity vector with the noise here that's what we're going to connect and now you see the gravity vector is not a vector of three numbers but it is getting information from here of course we need to render this and of course I'm gonna hide the original object bye bye